energy of the band, undeniable, like a freight train coming at you. Some of the songs that I wrote in my bedroom in New Jersey, I remember the day we wrote Look on a Prayer, not thinking much of the song. I said, that's the best song we've written to date. John's choruses demand to be sung by 20,000 people in an arena. That's a clip from the new four-part docu-series, Thank You, Good Night, The Bon Jovi Story, premiering this Friday on Hulu. It traces the history of the iconic group that transcended the hairband era of the 80s to become one of the biggest rock groups of all time. The series features never-before-seen photos and never-been-released demo songs to provide a look at Bon Jovi's life and the band's journey from New Jersey clubs to global fame. Gotham Chopper is the director and executive producer. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to be here. Talk about where they fit in, because we call them a hair band, but I feel like there, were, there were all these heavy metal hair bands that maybe, maybe had one hit. These guys were somewhere in between, like, I don't know, Springsteen and, and, and the hair bands. Yeah, well, I mean, look, it's on now. I mean, we talk mostly about the 40 years, but it's into its, you know, fifth decade at this point. I mean, that's, I think, the thing about Bon Jovi. Um, look, they came out of the New Jersey school. Um, so you mentioned Bruce, yeah. Southside Johnny. That's a prominent part of the first episode of the series is like the, you know, the mantle that they picked up. But then they just kept going and going and going. And yeah, I mean, they are great rock bands, but the 40 years sort of distinguishes them, I think, from a lot of the ones that came from that era, the Guns N' Roses, um, the Metallicas, et cetera, yeah. um, still going, which is pretty incredible. And you see all the band members, you know, uh, in the documentary talking about this. There was a strained relationship, wasn't there, between John Bon Jovi and Richie Sambora? Has that been mended? Um, I mean, I would say, look, it, it was pretty good for 30 years, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> um, uh, you know, towards the end, 2013 is when Richie left the band and Richie had had some issues. I mean, it is a story of rock and roll. And so there are issues all through. And, you know, I think um, Tico Torres, the drummer, says at one point, you know, this was a marriage between five guys, you know, one of the other band members who sadly passed away last year, um, Alec, John Touch, he only lasted the first 10 years. But yeah, I mean, I would say, where are they now? They're amicable, they speak. Richie's a big part of this. You know, he sat down for interviews. They correspond, they watch some of the rough cuts together. Mm. Um, do I know if there's gonna be a reunion? I mean, it's a much discussed topic. It's a question that John gets asked all the time. I'm not sure, you know, if that's gonna happen. But, um, you know, I think they talk, they correspond, they built this thing together. Yeah. You couldn't tell the story without Richie. And so I was certainly grateful to have him a, a part of it. Uh, looking back 40 years ago, it, was there something that they see very differently with the passage of time that surprised you? You know, I think that they just, what's remarkable about this band is the adapting, you know, it's like your first question, you know, grunge came and they sort of, they were there before Nirvana, et cetera, mm -hmm. exploded. And then, you know, unlike a lot of other bands, they didn't really try to adapt to the times. Hmm. They adapted because these are guys who, you know, went from these kids in New Jersey to grown men and, you know, all the ups and downs that come with life through that. Um, I guess what surprised me is just like, yeah, that sort of staying power and where that really the secret sauce that I sort of observed and even in real time as John was going through some issues with his voice trying to come back from that is like, man, the work ethic, just like the relentlessness. John will tell you, it was like, we weren't the most talented guys, but we were the hardest working guys. And you, you feel that in the archive and you certainly feel that even now. It's, I, I feel like I should know this, but did they write all their own musics? Did John write a lot of the songs? Did Richie? I, I'm sure the purists know this, and they're going to send me 5,000 emails about this, because that's how you make your money, right? Yeah. No, no, John. I mean, John wrote most of it with Richie. He was a part of a lot of the early songs, like, you know, a big... The, the living on a prayers, you know, um, there was also Desmond Child was a big part, you know, Desmond's prolific and then La Vida Loca and I, had a prolific career as a songwriter. Um, and then John still, you know, co-writes. I think he is very much a collaborator, but there's a few mainstays across time. And when you look at some of the biggest hits, you know, You Give Love Bad Name, that's another sort of collaboration between Richie, John and Desmond Child. So. Um, but he's, yeah, I mean, John, I would say the other thing about John, great artist, of course, 
great businessman, you know, yeah. and so, you know, controlling, owning that catalog. He's been with one record company pretty much his entire career. Um, so he's pretty prolific in that sense as well. That's great. Well, thank you. Good night. The Bon Jovi story premieres Friday on Hulu. You can check out religionofsports.com as well. Gotham, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much for having me.